Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A&P today. Specifically, we're going to check out the gluteal muscles. Let's go. So, have you ever noticed that humans have rather large backsides, well, relative to some of the other mammals? For instance, think about if you've ever seen a dog or a cat walking down the road with a large, rounded butt. You have not seen that. So the reason that humans have such a feature probably has something to do with the fact that they walk upright bipedally. And whether it is you're lunging or just standing there, these muscles are giving you support for your posture. So running up the stairs like these ladies are doing, doing some squats like she's doing, like he's doing here, Yes, I know they require some of the thigh muscles and some of the leg muscles for sure, but it also requires a lot of gluteal input so that humans can remain upright. So let's look at some of the details of the gluteal muscles or the glutes. But before we go too far, I want to say I'm going to break the thigh muscles into four different talks. The glutes will be first here. So most of the gluteal muscles are going to abduct, that is, take away the thigh from the midline and rotate it. And of course, the glutes are going to be back here on the back side, or what we call the butt in English. So the anterior muscles, most of them are going to have something to do with flexion of the femur or flex hip and extending the leg. And of course, remember, when you get to the knee, I can put a line through the knee. Remember, up above the knee is called the thigh, and below the knee is called the leg. It's a little picky, but it is technically correct. So the anterior muscles, sometimes known as the quads, are usually for the foreswing of your walking motion, that is the kick forward. Now, if you want to do the kick backwards or kick yourself in the butt for not studying so much for your A&P test, these are done with the hamstrings, the group of muscles here in the back. So those are the posterior muscles of the thigh, and they're going to largely be extending the thigh and flexing the leg. That is doing that backswing. Now the ones that aren't shown here, the ones on the medial side, they are going to do one thing only, and that is to pull the thigh back to the midline or adduct it. So here is a pretty good shot of the backside musculature. Gluteus maximus, of course, is the one that even little kids have heard about this one. I'll put a big X across one of it, and there's one on the other side. There's the gluteus maximus muscle. Originates at the iliac crest. That, of course, is right here. You can barely see that top part of the ilium. Some of the sacrum, some of the coccyx, so it has attachments all the way down here. Well, it's gigantic muscle. It's the largest muscle in the human body. Insertion on the gluteal tuberosity of the femur. And when you see this IT band, I'll do a specific slide on it later, but that's the iliotibial band. And you can see this out here, this white line. It is going to be colored white in almost every image that runs down from, well, from way up here on the ilium all the way down to the tibia past the femur. Action, and you'll see this very common with these gluteals, abduct, that is to pull away, and medial rotate the thigh. Gluteal nerve, branches L5, S1, and S2. Okay, gluteus medius, if I can clear my ink off here and make it more visible, is right there. It's right there, almost on the lateral part of the hip. So I'm just going to say originates ilium, and you can see it's a little bit under the crest here, but hey, potato, potato. Inserts in the greater trochanter of the femur, that very large lump of the femur. And same deal as maximus abduction, rotation medially of the thigh. Served by essentially the same nerve, but it is a little bit different. It's the superior branch, L4, L5, S1. Gluteus minimus is not shown here. Now, if I wanted to show it, all I would need to do is pull off gluteus medius, and it's right underneath it, almost in the exact same spot, same origin, insertion, actions, and innervations, a mirror image right underneath it. Okay, there are the three gluteal muscles, but there are some more smaller ones that lie underneath this that are a little bit trickier. 
And let's talk about this muscle here in yellow called the tensor fascia latae. Now that's the plural. And if I can circle it here on the left, I will do it. It's this muscle right there, tensor fascia latae. And it has something to do with tensing the structure called the fascia latae, which is a wrapping that kind of wraps all the way around the thigh muscles. You rarely ever see it on the picture. The green thing right there is that IT iliotibial tract. And if you can notice, the green continues behind tensor fascia latae all the way up to here. So it doesn't just stop right there at the bottom of tensor fascia latae. The iliotibial tract will run right here all the way down, again, past the femur into part of the tibia. Iliac crest, and what I mean by asis is right here, this anterior superior iliac spine. Insertion, IT tract. Rotation flexion of the thigh, served by the same nerve we just saw a moment ago. The iliotibial tract, again, is not a muscle. It's just a sheet of connective tissue. So we'll say it originates at the iliac crest and then inserts way down, again, right here on the lateral condyle of the tibia, way down at the bottom of the image. All right, first orient yourself. We're looking at the back of the pelvis now. Sometimes I call this the exploding butt muscles. And what we've actually done is here, I'm drawing in red, if you can see that, I've this is gluteus maximus, and it's been cut away. There's the rest of it over here, and it's been cut off. Notice also the gluteus medius here has been cut. I'll put G med, and there's the rest of it right there. And then now we can see underneath it minimus. So there's gluteus minimus. However, the main point of this slide is to show you the group of muscles right in here that are quite confusing at first glance. They kind of attach like this. And I don't want to be too perfect here, but they're going to go from the femur over to near the obturator foramen that we talked about way back when we looked at the pelvic bones. There is a sheet of tissue over that obturator foramen, and a lot of these muscles will attach either right on that sheet or right on the periphery of it. The first one we'll deal with is P. I'll put a P on it for piriformis, piriformis. It doesn't, it's not pisiform. Pisiform was that bone in the hand. It often gets confused. This is piriformis, originates in the sacrum, inserts again the top of the femur and that greater trochanter to externally rotate the thigh. These next four go like this, and it's just go, G-O, and then go again, G-O, go-go, P-go-go, and there they are. You can barely see this one where this O is on, but it's right here. I'm kind of moving my pen up and down on. So P-go-go, and I'm not going to show the details of them because they're almost carbon copies of each other. But gemellus superior is the first one. And then obturator internus. Remember, these all have something to do with the obturator foramen. Gemellus inferior is the next G. And obturator externus is the O. So P, go, go. And then the last one down here is Q. That one's pretty easy to remember. We've seen some other quadratus muscles before, shaped like a square or a rectangle. So this is called quadratus femoris, being that it's a square muscle attached to the femur. So here are these smaller muscles that are deeper to the glutes, but are often talked about at the same time. So there's the details of quadratus. All right, just a little bit of a recap. Here is, of course, gluteus maximus. And here, of course, is gluteus medius. So for this image, now we've removed uh, both gluteus maximus and gluteus medius. So we can really get a good shot here of gluteus minimus. I'll just put min here. Kind of looks like a seashell on the face of the ilium there. And then let's play our game. It's going to be P, right? And then what is it? Go, 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 and Q. P, go, go, Q. So piriformis, gemellus, the superior, obturator internus, gemellus, the inferior version, the little tiny one you can barely ever see, obturator externus, and then quadratus femoris. And this is a really, really good picture because it shows how these are all interacting with that obturator foramen and the tissue that covers it, just like that. All right, hope you enjoyed the talk on the glutes. Thanks for watching it to the end if you did. 
check out some other videos in the series if you want to learn more about AMP. See you for the next one. Bye-bye.